All right, good morning. Come on in. Just have a seat. There's still some. You just got to pass about 12 people. You'll be right. <laughs> Did you enjoy that talk this morning? Yes? Who's going to get a bacon award? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. Um, now, that's a really good, really good talk, and it just highlighted a few things that I've gone through in the last sort of five years. So I was pretty, pretty chuffed that I was there to experience it, to be honest. And David's pretty good. But I'm not going to talk about any of that, not even Bacon Awards. Um, we're here to talk about APIs with Azure Functions in particular. Um, so just to show hands, how many here people use, how many people here use Azure, say, every day or often? Ha, look at that. My crowd. How many here uses AWS? Get out. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oracle Cloud? No? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I work for a company where we do all, we say we do all the clouds, but we just do the major three. Um, and Oracle Cloud is kind of the butt of every single joke. So, but I've got to be careful now because Microsoft just did, you know, did a partnership with Oracle. And so. I'll just shut up now. Um, I am particularly happy to be here now. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got a bit of a twang. Yeah, mate, yeah, right. I do live in Australia, although I am Danish, um, but I'm really happy to be here because right now, if this will work, no, nope. come on, little button, go, go. No, it's decided not to work. Um, right now in Australia, it's drop bear season. Have you ever heard about drop bears? Yeah? Have you, anyone ever seen a drop bear? That's right, because you'd be dead. Um, so drop bears, that's not going to work, is it? No. Drop bears um, is a real thing um, to the fact that we have government actually warning us about drop bears, and especially tourists are often victims of these things because they... Why are you laughing? Um, they're, uh, they're vicious, vicious animals. Um, usually one in ten will survive that I attack by a drop bear, so, but the fact that I'm missing drop bear season makes me very happy. Um, I have a bit of news as well. I don't know if you saw this, but... Stack Overflow has released a keyboard. Have you seen that? So a few people have seen it, maybe? Looks like that. <laughs> Don't deny it. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> right, OK. So throughout this session, please do ask questions. Now, I know that most of you are Norwegians, and it is not your strongest point asking questions in a forum. I'm aware of that. So. I brought T-shirts, Azure T-shirts, because you all work with Azure. So if you ask a question that is not just like, um, you know, an actual question, you get a T-shirt. Does that work? Still not going to ask questions, are you? <laughs> They're all just going, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, okay, so that's the, we set the ground rules here. Um, there we go. I'm going to start with a little story about APIs, because that's exciting. Um, does anyone here, has anyone here ever used or uh, not used an API? Right, exactly. Well, you'd be lying anyway, because everybody has. It's kind of an integral part of everything we do as developers nowadays. Um, so I, I, was, I was freelancing for a while, and I got this gig. Yay! If you're freelancing, you go in contract to contract. Getting a new contract is a big deal. Um, and it was developing a new API, a new API for uh, a front end so I was doing the back-end API, and someone was developing some stuff for the front-end, and uh, all was good. I was working from home. I was freelancing from home. Um, I just had interaction with these particular developers that were doing the front-end. And then the more I went into it, the more I, I got working in this environment. It was by, well, by the way, it was all .NET, so I was happy. It was all you know my bag. Um, a few things started going, ha um, ha what? Um, not only were there... Uh, six development teams, I found out. Um, some of them were outsourced. Some of them had developers that you had to work with, but you couldn't talk to because you had to go through their manager. Um, there were no documentation as such. The documentation was written in JavaScript as a way of saying, I need this, not formalized. Um, and everything, every time I did a change or I did an, another you know, endpoint on this API, someone said, ah, oh, that wasn't exactly what we wanted. And it took forever. It was a two-month job that took six months. And at the end, I was just like, for God's sake, you know, get me out of this. Um, and I don't know, does anyone ever have that experience? Yeah, 
So there's like three people, the rest are lying. Um, that's true. You, you do get to this point where there's, there's just things that you go, yeah, what is going on here? Um, so today I'm hopefully going to smooth some of these things out, especially in the development phase with APIs. That's my goal. So again, ask questions if you have some. Um, really ask questions because if you ask questions, I know you're listening, right? I know that you have thought about what I said and agree or didn't understand something or disagree. So please, please do ask questions. You get much more out of it. Okay, so what is an API? This is where I go, does anyone know? And here we all go. Anyone want to venture a guess? How would you define an API? Exactly. Come on. No one. I can't see much. Oh, there's people up there too. Yes. Excellent. So the non-Norwegian answered. Um, <laughs> it's a contract of how to communicate for, for in software, you know, between software components, which is pretty good. It is a contract. Um, so the best way I, could, I found is a set of function and procedures allowing creation of applications that access the features or data of an operating system, application, or other service. That's a very, very formal way of saying it, but you're absolutely right. It's a way of saying, hey, I expect this bit, and that's, that's supposed to be all matrixy. No. Okay. I don't know, you're not getting matrix. You, that's supposed to really make you dizzy and move. Um, and, and that's right. That's exactly what it is. That is what a, an API is. And that how we should treat it as a contract. If someone gives you an API to go, all right, I approve. Yep, I'll sign that contract and don't change it. Um, so just the basic you know, structure, architecture of an API. You probably all know this, but I'll just make sure that we're all on the same level here. So you have some devices, whatever that might be, phones, computers, VR devices, fridges, whatever is internet connected, whatever needs to have uh, to communicate with something. And that usually goes through something like an API gateway, which is just your API, but it's got to sit somewhere, right? You got to communicate through it somehow. And it collects all this data, and then it shoots it off to somewhere. As a developer, you don't really care where it goes. That's why the API is there. And it could go to a server farm. Um, could go to robots or who the hell knows where it goes, right? We just don't really know. And that's the whole idea. We just have to honor that contract. Oh, sorry, a family photo. Um, to, to develop against that contract or getting it to the API gateway and then stuff will happen. Um, but if we're developing the API, well, we've got to cater for both sides. So one of the, some of the issues with APIs, not, not well, issues may be a bit strong word, but some of the challenging, challenging parts of it, is, uh, at least, is time to get this ready, right? There's a certain amount of time between here's the manual or the specification or the whatever, here's how we define this API till it actually exists, right? <laughs> right? Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> and, and to get this ready as fast as possible is critical, especially if you have a large development team. Because if you have 12 developers waiting for this API endpoints to work, and they sit and not do that for two weeks, well, they're either going to cost money or they could do something else. Or, like, there's, a, there's a cost to it. So time is really, really important. Um, something like a mobile team, mobile development team, I would say 99% of the time must have an API. If you're developing desktop software, you can probably deal without it for a while, but a mobile team must have an API. And there's a lot of stuff going to mobile, obviously, right? So how many here develop software for mobile? So about 10%, oh, okay. The rest of you probably do anyway, but it's through like your websites or something, I would imagine. Um, so yeah, so, mo so that's another thing that you know, takes time. Um, setting up resources and infrastructure. You know, an API is not something where you just click a button necessarily. There could be servers that need to be deployed. There's code. There's pipelines. There's you know the whole infrastructure part of this needs to be set up. Um, not only in, not you know just writing the actual API. Um, anyone think of any other issues? Like, what's the problem with starting a new API? Versioning. Oh yeah, yeah, versioning. Yep, that could be one. Um, you know, just for that, you're going to get a T-shirt. Please pass it up, because I can't throw that far, I don't think. If I hit someone, I do apologize. Oh, almost. 
<laughs> you're welcome. Um, no, you're right. And there are things that we, we want to try and address. And the reason I'm saying all this, obviously, I'm not going to try and address some of this using Azure Functions. Um, so that's kind of where we where API issues, challenges, what it is. Really basic. Then there's a concept, concept of a proxy. It'll all make sense, I promise. <laughs> um, the proxy is the authority to represent someone else. That's the high definition of a proxy, right? So you can have a proxy vote, which means you give someone the right to vote on your behalf. Or in our world, it could be a proxy that says, yes, I'm allowed to do stuff on behalf of this other process. Right? So there's this long definition, which was the best I could find. Um, dedicated computer or a software system running on a computer that acts as an intermediary, that's the keyword, between an endpoint device such as a computer and another server from which a user client is requesting a service. So it's something that sits in the middle. And it manages things, and it makes both sides' lives easier. That's the idea. Okay. So we often think of proxies as well as a network proxy. We're not talking about that now. We're just talking about software proxy. Okay. Who here works with Azure Functions? Wow, that's a few. Okay, cool. Um, so Azure Functions, for those that don't, um, it's a it's a serverless thing, which I know is this really buzzwordy thing to say, right? What does it mean when it's serverless? Yeah, it runs on someone else's server, right? Uh, <laughs> there's no such thing as serverless. But we like to think of it as serverless because we are not managing that server. We are not actually in charge of the infrastructure behind it. Um, one of the really, really cool things about Azure Functions or serverless um, as, a, as a concept is also this idea of consumption pricing or consumption model. Which means that if you, for example, on Azure, if you have an app service plan, you pay for that regardless. The app service plan you pay for you know, $60, $80, $100, whatever it might cost. And that gives you some resources. And you put things inside that. So you have your 10 websites, or your even your Azure Functions can live inside an app service plan. Um, but you pay for it regardless. If you use Azure Functions as a, uh, on a consumption basis, you only pay for what is used. Right? So if no one uses it, you don't pay a thing. That's kind of neat. I mean, hopefully someone will use it, obviously. <laughs> Otherwise, why did we do it? So does that make sense? Yeah? No one wants to argue with that either. Well, then. I'm just waiting for a question. No. <laughs> I will get one. I actually got one already. But um, OK. That's enough slides for now, I think. Um, so what I want to show you is, is building an API with Azure Functions. Um, it's very distracting, isn't it? Right. It's, I just put it up there so I can have a drink. That slide took me 12 hours to make. <laughs> yeah. The first, I did a fun talk once, the first, a five minute talk. The slide deck was 680 megabytes, <laughs> which is purely GIFs. Um, all right. So let's go into. The wonderful world of Azure. See, can you see that? OK. Please yell out if that disappears or something, right? Because I can't actually see it. Instead of just sitting there going, oh, that's strange. <laughs> so we have here a, an Azure function, a function app, I should say. Um, I've created this in advance, but it's as easy as going and click Add inside Azure and filling out four, uh, four fields of information, and you've got an Azure function app. So this is our first foray into serverless if you've never done a function before. Um, right. So I'm actually not going to go into functions at all. <laughs> because anyway, everybody here knew functions anyway. Um, not in the sense that this says function here. What I am going to use is something called proxies. Has anyone used the proxies feature? <laughs> was that none or was that one? No, there's no one. OK. Well, that's kind of why you're here, I'm guessing. And that's why I wanted to do this talk, because no one knows about this feature. Um, so it is a proxy, as we just talked about before in the slides. It's a proxy. It does something between two parties. Um, and we're going to use that to address all the issues, well, almost all the issues, with creating new APIs that I talked about earlier. So OK. We create a function, a proxy, by clicking the plus. I know, that's very exciting. Um, and what you get here is a, uh, a name and route template are the main things for now. 
and ooh, there we go. So we're hoping the Wi-Fi will be with us here. So please don't download Windows updates right now. If you that would be good. <laughs> um, so we're gonna we're gonna have a bit of a space theme. You, you may have guessed that considering you said space facts API, right? So um, we're gonna call the first one. That's just a name for me that I can read. It's never gonna, actually gonna go anywhere. Um, and I'm gonna give this a route template, which means that on my API, I'm gonna have this route to get to this proxy. So people. And the really cool thing in here is that I may not have, so I'm creating all the endpoints now for an API, so I should just set the scene. Someone said, hey, we need a new API, we need to have the amazing space facts, and I go, <gasps> okay. So in order to get developers working on the front end, whatever consumes it really quickly, I go, okay, I'm gonna go into this proxy part of Azure Functions, and I'm gonna create all the endpoints you need. And there's some really cool tricks you can do with this. So the first endpoint is to figure out how many people are in space right now. So people is the, uh, the route to this template. And then there's something called a response override, which means this is not actually going to go anywhere. The proxy is going to pretend to go somewhere and just do it itself. So we can give it a status code, 200, because this is always going to succeed. <laughs> That's, yeah, everything is OK. It's reassuring, right? And then we give it a body. And I'm going to go to my cheat sheet here, Whee! because I'm not going to type all this out. That would be crazy talk. And so now I have, well, not scroll, give me a sec here. There we go. In here, I have a JSON payload, right? Not particularly exciting or complicated or anything. But this, the idea with this is that this body, we've now decided that this API has a contract that says, when you ask for how many people are in space, you're going to get a message, a number, and an array of people, right? And each person has a craft, which is what they're on, and a name. That's the contract, right? So this is where we go, OK, I'm not going to hold you to it and say, this is what you're going to get. And I create this. I can copy this endpoint. Oh, did I copy it? There we go. And I now have, ta-da. If I, I could run it in Chrome, it would look better. But you get the idea. Um, or I'll get an you know, extension for Edge or whatever. Um, it spits out the JSON, right? That's it. It's on the internet. You can go to that now and get that data and create your own space facts page stuff. But just don't download Windows. Um, <laughs> right? And that's it. So now we've got an endpoint. And you might go, oh, well, that's not very exciting. Well, it is, right? And you're wrong. No. The thing is that if someone comes and says, hey, we want you to build this API, we want you to have this particular contract, we want you to, have, you know, provide this particular data in this format, you can go, OK, bang, here it is. Can you consume it? Is this OK? Really quickly. You can confirm, push the responsibility back on them and say, hey, this is what I've got. Is this what you want? Um, and they may go, yep, that's it. Or you really quickly, you know, fail quickly, fail fast. It's important. So, but of course, we can do a bit more than that, right? Um, so we want another proxy. And this one's going to be the location of the International Space Station. So I know this is going to be called ISS Location. And we're just going to give it the ISS oops, Location Endpoint. And we're also going to put it a status code. Space is amazing. That's the official new, in Chrome uh, version 74, that's the 200 returns. And I'm just going to give it what that's supposed to be. So in real, when we get, we, we are going to hook this up to real data, don't worry. We want a timestamp for, that's just a, a, a tick. Um, and we want the position that long of where the space station is at that particular time. And you should be surprised how fast the thing moves. <laughs> Um, I think it goes, oh, is it six times around the Earth every day? Something like that? I can't remember the details. Um, so this thing is going to change all the time. Um, and we can then save that, and we have now have two. Obviously, I could go to it again, but you can kind of guess what that is. But just to say, see here, instead of having people, well, you probably can't see that. But just trust me, I'm writing IS location. 
Yeah. So now we have two endpoints. That took me five and a half minutes, including blabbering. Right? Pretty damn quick. So we now, let me just get my cheat sheet here. What we can do as well is that, you know, for argument's sake, say that this message here is not an actual message about how, what the indication of how, whether it was successful or not, but it might be something else. So we can put in variables, right? Oops, message. And then what we can do is we can up here in the route, we can add message to that. Save that, and now we copy that again, go over here, and obviously we want to type something in that message, right? So I'm just going to go without spaces because, yeah, internets. Hey, and it comes up in the message, right? So now we have variables as well that we can use, which means that we can now more or less sort of cater for the dynamic content or the dynamic part of someone requesting something from this API. I know you're all blown away, right? It's supposed to be simple. That's the whole idea, quick and simple. Um, so now we have variables in there. So let's try and make it a little bit more interesting. So I'll create another proxy. And we're going to call this, come on, uh, NASA pick of the day. Because they have a picture every day. And this is going to be at images. And we might have more than one image endpoint, so we're going to call this uh, NASA, you know, astronomy picture of the day is what they call it. Um, right. And what I can do instead is that there's something called here backend URL. Backend URL. That is where I can pass this request to. So if I wanted this to go into, uh, Actually, let me just do this first, just so you get an idea of, we got three here, we put in a lot of data, 200, space is still amazing. And I'll just create that. So now we've got three endpoints that we're going to play around with a bit. Um, so this, and this is a real, uh, real API, by the way. NASA does publish all of this. Um, actually, let me just in here, just to open something, just so you get a nice sense for you know the actual JSON that comes out. Chrome is a little bit more, oh, or not. No. <sighs> okay. Um, but all the guess in here is that there's a link to the to the image and there's um, you know a description of everything um, of that picture or that astronomy picture of the day. So this backend URL, we can change that. So let's change it first for the ISS location. So if I go into my proxies, you can see there's now three proxies. The ISS location, and I want to use the backend URL instead. And this won't actually be, uh, I need to, I think I need to remove that. So there's no override. And we save that up here. And that message is not going to work anymore because they don't accept the message for the location of the International Space Station. That was just to show you how you can put variables into it if you need to. So now I'll just save it again. Let's go to it now. So, eh. Okay. So this is now getting, just to zoom in a bit here, the actual lat long for where the space station is, well, was, where it is now, 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 now. That's how fast it moves, right? Um, so if you wanted to, you could request every 20 seconds, every five minutes, whatever you need to, you could fire request off and get the position, put it on a map. That would be relatively simple, right? But now what we have is that we have created our own SpaceFax API, spacefaxapi.azurewebsite.net, and no one's the wiser. No one knows that we're proxying this off to a different API. Right. Now, the astronomy picture of the day is not on the same API. But we're creating one API for all the space facts. This is where the proxy is really powerful as well. We can channel all of these different things into our proxy uh, Azure Functions API. Say again? Is there a way to 
override? Authorize. Authorize. Are you talking about authorization for the proxy? You, yeah, we'll get to that, but that's a good question. Oh, guess what? You get a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> oh, look at that. Perfect. Um, but that's a good question. We are going to get to the security part of this as well. So, yeah. Okay. So now we have the location of the ISS space station. Uh, we want to have the number of people in space. I'll just put that in as well, because it's one of those things that never, ever changes. Well, it does. But people in space don't just come up and down, right? So here, and then I'm going to not remove the response override just to test my own curiosity because I can't remember exactly if you need to. And put that in here. No, I do need to. Okay, now we know. That was one of those things that I normally don't do in a row. So if you don't remove this, it ignores your backend URL. Save it again. And now instead of having the NDC team, in case you hadn't noticed, Jakob, Shasti, and Charlotte, we're going to have the actual people that are in space. And they're not on the NDC craft, they're on the ISS. So we have these lovely people that are, I don't know, I would imagine they'd be very interesting people to talk to. Um, but they're on the space station right now. And that is live data. That is actual people that are on the space station currently. Um, so that API is on this opennotify.org. Um, you can go there and play with it as well. They've got a bunch of other endpoints as well, if, if you need to, if you want to. So you can see that all right, though. It's not too small. I was trying to kind of figure out what the right, right font size would be. All right. So where are we at? Where are we at? Mm -hmm. OK, so let's get back to our NASA image of the day. OK, so whoops, get that one. So now this is NASA's API we're going to play with, right? So this is a different API again. This is not the Notify Org API. So we put that into the back end, and we just get rid of this again. There we go. So this one, you, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, you see that? Yep. Yeah, it says there's a uh, there's a demo key. So NASA's API is based on authorization. So you get a key, but if you just have a few diff a few small um, you know, a small number of requests, you can use this key called demo key, which is kind of nice. It lets you kind of test things and play around with it. And then we can also enter a date. Well, that means we need a date here, right? So we've got to put in a date field, which is what you can put in. So we do need to match those, um, those variables or those query string parameters or whatever they might be. OK, save that. And now if I go to this thing, so what, what day do you want today's date? I don't know if there's one today. We might do it to yesterday, because sometimes it doesn't come up straight away because of time differences. Uh, and this is the good old format, 18. Hey. So then there's a HTTPS link here to a high-definition image, which is that. So that's the picture from yesterday. Strawberry Moon, it's called. Um, so every day, NASA put out the astronomy picture of the day, and they're really cool. You can have rotating rotating on your desktop background as well, if you're a, a space nerd. OK, so that makes sense so far? Any questions to any of that? Was that a no or a yes? Someone just, yes question? Does it pass your headers? Aha, good question. Does it pass your headers? Um, you can add headers, so it does, yes, it does parse your headers, but you can also add your own. Um, so if you had specific things, it could be OAuth, um, you know, uh, um, uh, tokens, uh, whatever it might be that is in your header, you can definitely add that as well, if you need to add it on a per request basis, right? But it also passes through your headers. Yes, that's a good question. Oh, I'm running it. Why are we here? You look like a medium. No? Who asked it? Where was it? Up there? Well, oh, you already have one. I think I, because the light, I'm sort of like, I see everybody has a silhouette. So, OK. Well, don't have one then. <laughs> see? Sorry? The request all right, uh, yes. That is incoming. Is it? 
So you can override any of these REST uh, queries. For example, POST is usually a good one. And then um, you can add your queries. You pro oh, so hang on. Oh, yeah. What does that do? I think you got me there. You're going to get a T-shirt now, because I suddenly didn't. I can't remember what that does, other than it all writes your requests. That's embarrassing, isn't it? Medium? Yeah, medium. Yeah, medium. OK. It's going to turn into like just a T-shirt talk. Oh, underhand. Um, another T-shirt question, yes? Caching to this? Oh, right. Sorry. So can the proxy be cached itself? Yes. Um, no. <laughs> this is, again, this is based, in, we'll get to this at the end as well, but it is for get this out the door now, get someone, you know, remove this roadblock, basically. But that's a good question. I can't throw that far. Okay, we're gonna have to pass it up. I shouldn't tell you how many I got left, right? Because then you're gonna stop asking questions. Oh, so close. Um, hang on, <laughs> two seconds. Um, so we've got that. Now, cause any, can anyone see a problem with this? This particular string that I put in? Demo key, thank you. The key's there, right? Now, demo key itself is probably not that interesting, but what if it was my 32 character special key, right? So, if you were to give someone access to this, um, hang on, yep, um, we wouldn't want necessarily to put the key in there like that. So, what you can do, which is very cool, is that um, response. In here, we can add, uh, hang on, where is it? Get rid of that one. Two six. Okay, so I'll just go back to the function here. Ah. Which one was it? Changes made to the... Hey, but I have saved it. I have an empty header. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. Maybe that's what it was. Yep. This is like mob programming, isn't it? It's like 200 people. Well, how many there? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, safe. Well, keep telling me not to, to move. Hey, here we go. Okay, so in here, we have some platform features. We'll go through a bunch of these in a minute. Uh, but under the configuration, I can add and you might have seen this before if you've worked with web apps or uh, other functions or whatever, but I can add application settings. So I want to add my NASA key. In this case, the value is just demo key, right? And I want to update that. And I want to save it. So now we have an application setting, which is across this particular function app. So all the endpoints and all the functions and everything that's in it. So if I go back to my NASA pick of the day, mm -hmm. in here, I can change this to percentage, what do I call it, NASA key? Oops, percentage, right? So now I've abstracted that demo key out into the application settings. Um, and that means that you can have someone centrally uh, manage that particular key. There could be more than one, obviously, because if you're collecting a whole bunch of API endpoints, there would be a lot that might need to be managed. Um, we'll get to that. That's a very good point. <laughs> Someone's way ahead of me. Put in the key vault, they said, but we shall get to. Well, we're not actually going to put in the key vault because that will take forever, but um, not forever. But in terms of an hour talk, it will take forever. So if I go back to my uh, here, copy this. If I go back to my facts here, and I still put this in, is it going to work? Is it going to work? 
Or did I blow something up? Sorry? Yep. Yep. So what the question is, is there a way that we can have this this date parameters over here? That worked, by the way. Yeah, hey. Let's, we'll just change what we talked about to another day, make it a bit more interesting. There we go. Uh, is there a way that I can have this date parameter dynamically generated, is what you're asking, in something, a static function, or something that you know ch channels it into here? Uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, sort of, yes or no. Um, I'll show you something in just a sec. Um, but no, so this, think of this as lightweight API management, okay? This is not the Azure API manager, All right? This is this, you know, we'll get to some of the differences uh, a little bit later, but it's, yeah, think of it as sort of a lightweight, need to get it out the door quickly, prove a concept, I can, you know, get people working, am I doing it right, give you some data. But it, that's what the value is. It's really, really valuable in that scenario. Um, okay, so in here, there's something called an advanced editor. We always like things that are advanced. Who here does not always go to the advanced settings? See, exactly. Like we, as soon as, and I'm sure Microsoft knows this. No, no, we got to make it advanced because they, oh, I got to press that, and that's we just do, right? <laughs> Who here uses Express settings when they set something up? Exactly right. So um, yeah, um, this will just load. Do, 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 do. This is um, hosted on Kudu as well. So this is all it is. Now I've been doing, because I did a workshop for the last two days, and there was a few, few times where we were doing GUI, WYSIWYG stuff, and there's hardcore developers going, that's not development. OK, here's some JavaScript, <laughs> right? The reason I'm showing this is that this is all it is. The whole thing I've done so far is just a JavaScript, uh, so JSON um, file, essentially, called proxies.json. And that is a part of an Azure function. So every proxy is an Azure function. It's just that you know Azure does some magic behind the scenes to facilitate some of these proxy features. But it is just a function. That's why it sits in the Functions app. So this is what you have as proxies.json. That's where the proxy definition lives. All right. So in here, if you could do something in, again, back to your question, can I do dynamic stuff and things in here? Well, ish. You can put in things. Um, you know, I'm to be honest, I'm not super familiar with the all of the different features of this because there's a lot in Azure Functions. But almost whatever you can do in a function, you can do in a proxy, um, except for compiling the C# -sharp code. So this is um, also the way that you can uh, you can manage all this in Visual Studio Code if you want, or Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code is a very popular tool for this particular scenario. Um, and you can write your proxies in JSON in that sense. And you can download the, I think it's the Azure Functions extension that has some autocomplete around some of the features that are in here as well. OK. Uh -huh. Right. So now we have an API. It's rudimentary. I will grant you that. But we have three endpoints. Um, one of the things that we would want as developers, I would imagine, is that if we start building some of this stuff, we would, yes, we would want the code. We want the proxy.json. But we also want some source control, right? We're not just going to go into the portal every single time and change the date field to be date underscore time or whatever it might be. Um, we want some way of managing the deployment pipeline. Anyone not use uh, source control? <laughs> no one's going to admit to that. <laughs> it's like everybody uses tests, right? Yeah, that's it. Yes, OK. Um, everybody uses underwear. Underwear, yes. Yeah. Um, OK. <laughs> I'm not sure I agree with that, but <laughs> it is a random question that doesn't make any sense. I agree with that. Um, but no, it's, it's having a DevOps pipeline of some sort is a good idea. And in our Azure Functions app, we get all the goodies for proxies as we do for Azure Functions. 
So in here we have uh, some properties under general settings. And there is a deployment trigger URL here. We can use that in Azure DevOps, among other tools, to push code to. All right? So that would be for this particular function app. So obviously we need to manage which proxy and which function we're pushing to. Um, we can deploy code. So that's one way of doing it. In other ways, there's a deployment center. So we could actually, in here, define where we want the code to come from as well. So we can pull the code. I don't like that. That's not, you know, I f to me that feels the wrong way to do it. I want to manage the code somewhere else and push it into where it's hosted. I don't want the hosting to pull the code. But I don't know if there's a difference. I just feel there's a difference. <laughs> um, but that's probably a personal choice. Um, right. So what else we got? Any questions for that? That makes sense, right? You want to use something like DevOps. Yeah. So the question is, do you, you, do you put the JSON dot, um, sorry, proxies dot JSON file in source control? Is that right? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and the rest of what comes with, um, with the function, right? So probably not that. Or, yeah, it doesn't show you that much. There's a few other files that comes with that function as well. Um, and you can push the whole thing. You'd probably have both proxies and functions in one, to be honest. You might have, um, they, could, they could interact in that way. You could have f functions that lead into uh, a proxy. If I just close these lovely tabs. Um, because you can have, you can create logic log gaps. Anyone know what logic gaps are? A few people? Um, it's it's um it's a way of making developers look amazing and managers really happy, <laughs> because it's a it's sort of a it's also JSON notation really, but it's also a WYSIWYG way of connecting things. So yesterday in the workshop we did something that everybody needs to do. Every time someone tweeted serverless hashtag serverless, we created a record in a Cosmos DB. Very very real scenario. Um, no, obviously not. But you can connect things that just triggers other things. So if you want to know about a thing that happens over here, you can channel it through a logic app and, and get notified or get something inserted or happening. So you can do that with these proxies as well. Um, and of course, there's Kudu that we just saw in here as well. Um, oh, actually, we can click on Kudu because it's slightly different. And again, did you notice that? <laughs> exactly. Advanced tools. Um, very important. So the Kudu service is what, th this, is what's, this is the VM that's running our Azure Function app. Right. So we can go in and have a look at what is actually running on this VM that we're using. Um, and we can do a couple of cool things. I didn't know about this till very recently, that Kudu is all this. I'm very happy with all this cool stuff. Let me just see. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Process Explorer. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You can see every process that's running on that VM. Um, you can react to things. You can actually get a, whole, a command interface, and you can just type things in, like you have a command prompt on a, on a VM. But this is not really responding. Ooh. There we go. Debug console. We have a, you know, even a file structure, everything. So we feel, I know, as a developer, like, oh, I have a little bit more control now. I like this. Um, so Kudu is good. It's advanced as well. Yeah. Um, there are, I'm not going to go through all of them. Networking. Networking in Azure is, it feels like it's an IT pro thing, right? How many here is a sysadmin, if anyone? Anyone manages? There's a couple. Um, so managing a network or infrastructure doesn't feel like a development task necessarily. But what networking will allow you, a VNet, virtual networking on Azure, is that you can control very fine-grained control of what access things have to your Azure resources. Right, so you can say, oh, they have to be in the same virtual network. or, And that can give, lead you into having a security conversation about your application, which is important. Um, so don't quite discount. We can't live just in saying, developers, we write code. Urgh, that's it. We have to understand some of the others, these other things as well. Um, now, SSL, it comes with um, SSL out of the box if you just use the azurewebsites.net um, domain. But we probably don't want to do that. We want to add a custom domain. We can add our own SSL certificate if we wanted to. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome to do that. We can indeed buy a certificate from here. Who has bought a certificate in the last six months? It's like three people. 
exactly. If you, do, if you weren't aware, certificates are free, right? Let's Encrypt and among other companies offer free certificates. Um, and I'm hoping that this will be a part of Azure very soon. And you can just click Let's Encrypt and it does magic, right? Because it's one of those things that we don't really want to think about, but we need to have that. We know there has to be a certificate. We need to know that the transportation of our data is secure. Um, but it's not the most interesting thing in the world, right? Troy's not here, is he? No, good. Um, <laughs> so, um, custom domains, we can add custom domains, which is important because we want to make this our own, possibly. Um, I'm not going to go through it because I would have to buy a domain. Um, but that's uh, like any other Azure resource that has its own domain. It's the same kind of experience. OK, someone was asking about authentication. Where was that? Sorry. Over there. That's right. So authentication uh, out of the box on Azure comes in a few different varieties. So we can have, we can authenticate with Twitter, because why would you not do that? Um, what you would normally do is probably authenticate with Azure Active Directory. And that would become an authentication provider so that in order to even access that API, the URL, you would have that OAuth token in your session. Right, that makes sense? Is that what you were asking before? What about what, sorry? GWD. Doc, I don't know what that is. What? Yeah, I don't think that's some. I don't, what? GWT? JWJ. Oh, J. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, JSON Web Tokens. That would be, um, you would configure your own provider, to be honest, um, and you would set it up through Azure Active Directory somehow, I would say. Um, there's not, currently, there's not a, um, a way to do that that I'm aware of. I might be wrong. Um, That's a good question. So we're talking about authenticating the proxy, accessing the proxy. How does the proxy authenticate against what it needs to go through? That has to be through currently through those auth keys, like you pass through an authentication, like a, you know, like NASA has their key that you need to pass through. I don't know of any other way to do it unless you can do it with a um, a header, and you know what the token is that you need to pass through, but that's a bit ugly. Um, so again, lightweight API management. Um, another way that you can authenticate, apart from Twitter and Facebook, is, uh, yeah, that's fine. We can use identity. Um, so this is within Azure. So anything that on Azure, as an Azure resource, that need to access this particular resource, being the proxy and the function, you can assign an identity to them. So that so you assign an identity to um, a managed identity to the proxy, and then you allow other uh, things to access that managed identity. Right. So that's a that's probably a really good way to do it if you have an internal structure architecture, um, and not not so much externally, because um, this very well could be an internal API that you're building. Absolutely. Okay. So we were talking about Azure Key Vault you would use identity to that as well. So whoever had the Azure Key Vault question um, over there, that is probably the best way to store secrets that you need to use internally to Azure, even externally, but internally specifically. So Azure Key Vault is you putting your secrets, your certificates, whatever it is you need to think is a secret into this Azure Key Vault, and it manages it all for you. So you just request the, or you authenticate, obviously, with Azure Key Vault, and you get, you say, I want the value of this particular key. You never, ever know what the value is, and you can never, ever see the value once you put it in there. And that is really cool, because it means that it's secure, right? If you need to authenticate to get something out you can't see, mm, that's pretty cool. So yes, Azure Key Vault, you absolutely need to use uh, in some capacity if, if you're serious about this. Um, I'm not going to go through resource management app service plan because that's kind of a moot point. Um, does anyone other have questions? Because I do have three t-shirts. One is a fitted t-shirt in large though, so. Wow. Hey, oh, sorry. Yep. Can 
So can you route subdomains of... I'm not sure I understand exactly what the scenario is. So you have a subdomain that has an API on it? Gotcha. Yep. So if you had, say, for argument's sake, 20 different subdomains for different customers that all essentially have the same API that you want to route, route into the same endpoint on the back end, is that what you're asking? Um, Correct. Um, I would I would not use this for that. that. I would use API Manager, the the full blown API management tool in Azure. But that is that's a good good question. Um, small or large? <laughs> so that means there's a small left, and I don't have to bring it back to Australia. Yay! Oh, almost. Good questions though. See, I got you warmed up. I know. Took a while. Um, Okay, let me just go back because I am almost out of time. But I just want to, well, show you all the beautiful GIFs again. Um, no. So why do you want to use them? Well, we kind of covered it a little bit, but let's just kind of summarize. Why do we want to use this? Because I'm sure there's some of you here singing, you know, sitting thinking, well, it's a bit, a bit light, a bit, you know, doesn't really give me everything. But no, it doesn't. It's not supposed to. Um, it is quick. You know, I've spent what, six minutes setting up three endpoints or something, and then I was blabbering for the rest of it. It doesn't take long. It's really, really quick, especially if you already know what the contract is. What is the data you're supposed to provide? Um, it's cheap. It is really cheap. Um, does anyone know what Azure Functions cost on the consumption model? You can't answer. <laughs> oh, you don't know. <laughs> anyone, any idea? That's right. The first million requests are free every month. A million. Right? So there's a lot of development that can go on with a million requests every month. And then after that, it's something like for the next million is like 16 cents. I know. So it is ridiculously cheap. It is obviously meant for people that are for, you know, for companies and applications that have many hundreds of millions of requests, right? Yes, question. Per subscription or per function app? It would be per subscription, I would say. Yeah. Because otherwise, I don't know how you would measure it. Yeah, um, but still cheap. <laughs> so, so even if you you, know, you had a hundred thousand hits in development, meh, right? Um, and it's simple. It's so simple. Like I would almost bet that anyone here could go and do what I just did. And now there were no one knew about proxies and functions. Now there's, well, a few hundred people that know. Um, so is this for everything? No, absolutely not for everything. That's not the point of it. It is for prototyping, for putting things up quick, for getting people to work, for getting it out the door, and for proving that you've understood what that API contract means. Um, any last questions? Because I do have a small um, unisex, I think they call them, and a large fitted T-shirts. No, can't see any hands. OK, yeah, there, yep. That's yeah. That's a good question. You can do you want to you large fit it. It look you very very look, make you look very handsome. You know what? You can have them both. <laughs> um, so there is a tool called API management, which some people may know, and which is a full blown give me all you got, um, pay for it as well, obviously. Uh, but you can get you know throttling, and you can get you know sorry. Caching, yes, caching. Um, some of the things that we were, were asked before. So this is, yeah, as I said, get, let, let us get going, prove things. I'm a single developer or whatever. I need to provide a thing for us, you know, so I don't hold people up. Uh, but it's really, really powerful as that. It's kind of fun to play with as well. Um, so by the way, that's the color that you need to pick up outside and put in the box. Um, not that I've bribed you with t-shirts. That has nothing to do with it. Um, <laughs> That's me. I'm Lars. I work for this company. Um, I always put that up at the end because that's not very interesting. But um, thank you very much for coming, and I hope you have an ex excellent conference. <laughs>